Hello YouTube. There's a lot going on on the screen today, but uh, let me just give you a real uh, brief overview of what we're going to do here. Of course, you can see right here we have the gorgeous 2006 Mac Pro 8-core machine. And, uh, you know, inside you can see a couple of things. For instance, the Radeon 4870 graphics card located right here. Quite a powerhouse. Really like the card. There's a 30-gig uh, SSD there taped with double-sided tape, which is not really working too well, but it'll do for now. I'll uh, get a cage for that eventually. Um, they're not that expensive, so I'll just order one uh, soon-ish. Um, well, there aren't any other discs in there. Which you might think, hey, that's very interesting. There, sh there should be like a shit ton of discs in there because it's you know a fast machine and whatnot. But uh, let me just tell you what we're gonna do here. First, we're gonna upgrade our RAM. Got uh, some uh, gorgeous new RAM uh, there. We're going to be installing that in these risers. Already uh, emptied the risers, so there's nothing in them. There we go. They're uh, completely empty. We're going to take out the video card again. We'll be downgrading back to the 7300 GT. And uh, the reason for that is very simple, because we're going to turn this thing into a virtualization server running VMware ESXi. We're going to be running ESXi version 5.0. I've already done some extensive testing on this with 8 gigs of RAM and ESXi 6. Works very well, you just need to do some very um, simple uh, modifications to the uh, installer in order to uh, get it to recognize and boot properly. Because of course the Mac Pro 2006 and 2007 um, have 32-bit firmware and 64-bit CPUs. And that combination is no longer supported by ESXi since version 5.5. So for ESXi 5.5 and 6.0, you need to be, <coughs> you need to be, uh, need to modify a couple of files, just the boot files basically, and uh, it'll work just fine. So we're going to be installing these memory sticks right now. There you go, riser one is done. We can put it back into the Mac. That sounds fun, back into the Mac. It's totally mectacular. I'll stop at puns now. So yeah, very simple. Let me just show you one of these modules so we can see what we're working with here. Just a regular Micron. It's very simple memory, not uh, the double wide uh, memory sticks, but uh, these don't get too hot actually. They don't get any hotter than the regular memory that you find in these, so it's perfectly fine. So it's just regular PC2 5300F, four gigabyte modules for a total of 32 gigabytes. You might say, well, that must have cost you a fortune. Well, I paid basically $1 per gig for this memory. I paid about $38 in total for uh, these eight modules here. So just over a dollar per gig. That's a good deal, I think. That's what I was willing to spend. First, I was going to do just 16 gigs, because that's more than this machine would ever be able to use properly anyway. I mean, 32 is a bit overkill, unless I add some faster storage that can actually uh, speed boost a little bit more. But yeah, I did anyway, just because I could, basically. It's that simple. Okay, now we just need to pull the video card, because now we've got the RAM. I might as well just take these cables out at some point. I don't really need to that much. Sorry about my arm in the way. I'm just being lazy, just doing this with a screwdriver today, so. Now we can just uh, take out the card. Thank God that the previous owner actually wrecked the uh, retention clip. So now we can take the card out more easily. Just take another good look at that beast. That 40 at 75, 12. It really is a magnificent card. I really like it. It doesn't run too hot. I mean, if you uh, put the fan speed up 10% over uh, idle, because this thing, uh, Runs pretty hot when idle, it runs about 85C, which was normal for the time. But if you ramp it up with 10%, uh, it doesn't even sound like a hairdryer that much. And uh, it'll stay at around 58. It's a very decent temperature. I don't know why the difference is so big, but, you yeah, mean, I know, KO, I don't really care. As long as the darn thing works. And that uh, basically means that you can actually play a game or two on uh, a Mac Pro from 2006. Don't expect any spectacular performance. I mean, you should really stick to games that are pre-2012 mostly. And again, here's T7300 with SLI support. 
if I ever get another one, I might actually just try to see how bad it is. And I might uh, add USB 3 at some point to this machine as well. That's something I'm still sort of contemplating about. I don't really know yet. I mean, just seeing how cheap this base machine was, I mean, like I told you in the first video of this Mac Pro, if you haven't seen that, then by all means watch it. Um, it's pretty much worth just 100, 100 euros, that's what I picked it up for. Didn't have any discs, didn't have any RAM. So, you know, pretty basic. All right, so, I was talking about very basic stuff all, you know. Um, right, so basically we've pretty much done everything we need to do in the Mac itself. Um, we just need to add more storage, of course. We got this uh, one terabyte blue drive that we'll be using for storage for the virtual machines. And uh, yeah, I'm sort of contemplating what I'm gonna do with this. Because right now this has OS 10 Yosemite on it. Runs very well, of course, also double-sided double tape because I'm a cheapskate. I mean, the adapters for this thing are like 20 euros each, so, you know. But yeah, it was a really basic machine when I bought it, just empty, just had a video card, but no RAM, no discs. Didn't even know if it worked properly or not. I was willing to take that gamble. I mean, the Mac Pro is very, very reliable. These machines barely ever give up. So let's just uh, install the disc here. There we go, now I've got some storage. But uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this SSD though. This is like a 60 gig uh, Agility 3. Works very well, very nice SSD. I mean, the thing in there is just a KC200, I think, or V. What the hell is that thing? Just a regular SSD and now 200. Wow, very first series SATA 2. Very fast SSD though, runs uh, OS 10 Snow Leopard on there. OS 10 Snow Leopard server, to be exact. And this is running Yosemite. I'm probably going to be using that SSD for host cache in uh, ESXi um, to get some speed up during OS installations. So I don't need to do that fully on network uh, performance, but I can also just you know utilize file transfer speed boosts that you can get with an SSD. All right, so I'm not going to put this in now. I don't think I'll need it. I'll we'll just we'll just boot straight into OS 10 Snow Leopard server because this card will support it anyway. Uh, Runs very well as well, I might add. Very fast boot ups and whatnot. So let's just get that closed up. And uh, you know, before I forget to mention, the good thing about ESXi in a machine like this is you can just boot it from USB. Just make sure you have the proper boot files and you can just boot from USB. And uh, you don't need to install it to a local disk. You can just use your full uh, hard drive for virtual machines. You can just make it a VMware file system. So. That's pretty much it as far as the uh, internals go. Um, let's boot it up and uh, see if the Rambo grid was at least a success. It should be the right plug. Yeah, there we go. It's very quiet now that I no longer have the uh, 4870 in there because when the system boots up, that thing is loud. It's like a jet engine taken off. Well, not the engine taken off, but the jet entirely, you know, whatever. There we go. At least it posted, so no errors there. Okay, and we're booted up. SSDs really make sense in a machine like this. Just let me auto adjust that real quick. Let me log in. Disk was not readable, that's the uh, VMware disk. Already has a bunch of virtual machines on there. And if you see any artifacting on the display, that's normal. I'll uh, fix that later because I had multiple graphics cards in here at one point. I had the 7300 in there and the GT610, then I had to uh, share the lanes with, between them. No longer need to do that, so that's good. But I do want to fix the display though, because this mode really looks pretty horrible. There we go. This display artifacts on anything but the native resolution, so. We had to fix that real quick. Let's see here. 
Yeah, we'll go with X4s. Anyway, let's give that a quick reboot, and then we'll check the RAM. Okay, reinitializing. I mean, this really shows that if you just are willing to put some money into 2006 machine, you can really make it perform up to uh, up to spec, really. I mean, of course, if you look at decent enterprises these days, they're really just chucking out servers based on this platform. Hector throwing out servers based on the Saga 1366, you know, X58 and the server-sided uh, chipsets that are related to that. Even the first generation of 2011 is being phased out in some companies already. So everything is basically moving to 20 core CPUs on uh, 2011 3. Really, the server market is advancing way more quickly than the, the user or consumer desktop market is. And I'm really glad that I'm in that field of, uh, field of work, really. But uh, yeah, definitely working. We've got two 2.33 gigahertz quad-core Intel Xeons and 32 gigabytes of 66 or 667 megahertz DDR2 RAM. Let me get a good zoom in there for you. There we go. Now you can see that. So yeah, that's running like a dream. All that's left to, to do on this is to install VMware ESXi uh, version 5.0 because I want some legacy OSs on there. I'm really willing or wanting to uh, experiment a little bit with that. Uh, ESXi 6 does not really support uh, anything lower than Windows Vista at this point. It's basically just Windows 7, uh, Server 2008, R1 will work uh, and up, but nothing older than that. It will just hang and freeze and whatever. You can't really install them anymore, which is a shame because I really like experimenting with Server 2003 still or Server 2000 because that's not what I've been taught. I've been taught to work with Server 2008 R2 and up. Um, Open Filer as well, uh, some other Linux stuff, but uh, not the old Windows Server. So I really like experimenting with those, and uh, they run or should run like a dream on a machine like this. So that's just where I'm going to end this video right now. Hope you really enjoyed this uh, little hardware installation on the Mac Pro. Um, if you like this sort of content, by all means, uh, leave a comment. Um, if you hated something about it, also leave a comment with some, uh, you know, structured criticism. Nothing like that, oh, you suck at vids, like some dumbasses sometimes spew. I mean, they're just trolls anyway. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching. See you guys in the next one. And leave a comment if you have one. That's pretty much my point.